Let's create procedural pipes in Houdini. Let's start with the core. Now let's just make some shape that you would use commonly for the pipe layout. Something in 90 degree angle, but of course it doesn't have to be press enter. After that, let's bevel it. Clean out the group, so let's put it on points and maybe something like three would be fine. And now just put down sweep. And in Houdini 18, it's very nice for the second input. There are actually presets. Now let's take second input as a round tube, like that. So this is going to be our base shape. And what's great about this, you can go back to the curve, press enter, and just move around these pipes however we want later on. So, after that you want to create the connections for these pipes and that will be done very easily. We can just alt, hold, alt and hold the poly bevel node. Put it like that, put it to the chamfer. You can see it's created the created straight chamfering, so put it the chamfer division to the zero. And now let's put down carve. Basically carve tool is going to with these settings. Make sure you have these settings. It's going to basically split our our curve into the into the into separate pieces. Basically every two will be one piece. And with that we can group by range. And with that, press enter to go into selection. You want to select one of every two. And you want to actually offset like that. So basically you want to delete these connections that we just made. And I'll just put down delete. And select the group like that. Now let's create the actual geometry that we want to copy to these points. With that we can just take a look at something like circle. Put it in the X and Y plane. That's actually, if it doesn't look right for you, just try to play around with these planes. Because now we have to go down a polyframe. Basically this node is going to create the coordinates for this for our points or the end of these. So we can actually frame correctly these points that we want to copy. So copy to points. After the polyframe make sure you have these settings. Actually these two down doesn't matter. Just put them first. It went to normal for our tangent name. So first the geometry and other points to copy to. Now let's just merge them together. Let's take a look. You can see that we are making these these caps connections for these pipes. If we go back to the curve we can move these around. They will follow very nicely. Something like that. So now I just create something more interesting. If you take a look at the pictures of these kind of connections for these pipes, basically it's just a two two pipe ends connected together. So I'm just going to create something like this. Poly extruded inside. Like that. like that, and let's create also these bolts. For that, we just have to go to the back to the circle. So let's see, this is our base shape, and let's say we want to.
copy bolts around this, this shape. Let's duplicate another circle. Let's make it less bolts and maybe it's inside. So this is the area that we are going to copy the bolts to. So like that. So now let's copy it again. Let's go to the this and let's see how big we want to these bolts to be. Well, I think the heads of the bolts could be like this big. Well, we can also always just go and change it. So now let's poly extrude it like that. How big of a heads we want. So now let's poly extrude it again. But now we just want to inside. Maybe a little bit more like that. Now let's poly extrude it again. This is where we have to take a look how long we actually want them. So for this setup, it's actually very easy, very easily. So let's just duplicate these copy the points. We want these bolts as a geo and this circle as a point, like that. So and now we want to we have copied to these points. And with this we can actually move it around, and we want to merge them together with this base shape. We just select this, this, and hold Alt, and just hold out of this one of this circle that we just selected, like that. So now we have created this shape, and if we want to move it, just go to the very first circle. I want to extrude it a little bit more so it goes outside. Let's also create the end. So it's like there's this screw at the end that holds it all together. So like that. Let's just select this and extrude it. And maybe just a little bit. Let's take a look. You can see that we have a little bit too much. So of course, if you want to, we can just go back, just bring it in like that. Of course, you can also name this all that you don't get confused. And you can just import models from ZBrush or whatever inside here, so you don't have to do any modeling in Houdini. But I think it's fun in modeling in Houdini. It's fine. So, after the merge, this is the new object we want to create. Just put it inside back to this. And we got this kind of setup. We have our pipes and our connections and of course if you go back to the, to the curve you just move it around everything follows and you can just create endless amounts of these kind of tubes and what's great about this since this something in the tighter third something like that we can just go to the power poly bevel and increase the beveling we can actually increase the separation, but also this kind of shape wouldn't really be very realistic for the for the actual modeling in a real life scenario. So you can also just go back, make it a little bit like that, make these a little tighter or not like that. Now. Actually, this tool. Now let's create another, maybe a little bit more organic tube looking, looking, looking tubes, and also how can we randomize this placement of these connections? So that's in a coming up in a second. Also, I also almost almost forgot to mention that of course, since since we made it this kind of setup, we can also always change the amount of bolts and any kind of bolts that there is so go back to the circle and change the division amount you can see it's going to update all of them how many bolts actually there are of course we can make it something like a switch in here between the different models that we want so we can make whatever how many bolt types you want or from any other 3d package Import them and just place them so that they 
you can also always make changes to this asset. For the more organic looking shapes, let's create a little bit different setup. So, first of all, let's create a null node. Something like red. Put it on out so we know that this the shape is going to drive all of our shape bases. But now, let's say we want to create, let's put down the bevel. We went to another bubble. So why are we doing that? So first of all, put it to the points and let's bevel it all the way to the max. You can see now it's a mess because we don't have when points reach the end. It's end of its slide. So basically we have to, we can go whatever we want, but it's going to smooth out the shape. But but now we have to just put down fuse so that all the ends that connect each other they're gonna fuse them together like that and now it's pretty simple setup with the sweep put it to the round tube like that so this is going to be our organic looking tube And now, as you might imagine, the next setup is pretty much the same. From the fuse node, let's put down the car. Let's split all of this tube. And now, let's just put down group by range. So let's see, we want to select maybe we don't want too many of these, so because they're not really. It's kind of like ex, I'd say artistic choice <laughs> for you to choose how what where you want these. So let's just use this and let's take a look how it's gonna look. So let's delete this. So let's say this is where we want our connections. Let's put down a polyframe. Also, you can just copy from that, but whatever. So, let's make it to the here, because we want basically the same, the same geometry in there, so. Copy to points. So geometry is going to be the same that we matched there, so. Like that. Now just copy them, my bad. Like that. You can see that it's kind of looking weird because there's also there are two of them very closely connected. So what we can do? Also, this bevel. Let's make it more resolution. As you can see, with the increasing resolution, even more and more connections come in. So we can play around with this. But you can see that this is basically the fewest we can get is these two connections because. After we delete, there are these. This is the least we can select with the poly range because after that, it's all connections connects together and it deletes itself. So what we can do is just randomize the amount that we are copied from here. So let's take a look how can we do that. First of all, we want to create the attribute so after the polyframe attribute create node in this node so we want to name our attribute so this can be whatever I'm gonna put down randomize just copy so we can easily copy when we need it so after that make sure it's an integer and in the spreadsheet, you can see that we have it's a point class, and at the point we have randomized, and its its value is zero. We have t two, it's two, so that one is zero for this. So we have ID for every of these points, 
it needs zero. So now I want to add attribute for every one of these that we copy to. So if I just duplicate this. I want to create it on primitives because this is a primitive that we're gonna copy. And you can change to the primitive. You can see that now it's one. I want to let's put it on one. Just easier to understand. So after that, let's go to this. So I actually already had this piece attribute, so it's enough. So you can see how it works. So after that, I went to attribute randomize. So you can see that now it's actually for the default, it's going to change the colors of every one of these pieces, but we want to actually copy the randomize attribute like that. And in this, all we have to worry about is these dimensions because in Houdini you can go like there are like matrices and vectors that's even four dimensional. So to go to the one dimension because we don't want just numbers. And now minimal value will be zero and max one. So basically when it's going to randomize, whenever it's gonna be one, it's gonna copy this connection and when it's zero it's gonna leave it empty so pretty easy setup go to the copy to points and they're actually piece attribute that's going to make sure when you whenever they match together whenever then the attribute matches from po for points and our our connections connections is going to copy it so and if you want to control the amount of connections we get actually so there are a couple of ways first of all we can change the minimal value so this is in tanger so whenever we have 0 0.5 basically it's gonna round up to the round out to the one so 0 0.4 is going to be basically the minimal amount of zeros that we can get so basically most of these will be filled with the connections so let's put the zero and you can actually more easily play with this global scale. You can see that it's actually changing the amount of points we are making with the global scale. So this is the one way and so let's see this is around what we want and if you want different locations for these connections go to the options and there's some global seed option. You can just go around and change whatever you want for this. At the end, let's take a look what we've done. So, at the first, we have one curve that's going to drive both of these shapes. So, this is our more organic looking tube, and this one is going to be our very industrial looking connections. And of course, let's just to show what's powerful about this, let's go to the very first, very first curve. Let's reselect it and create a new one. Let's just go around. Something like that. Go to the... You can see that it's updated. So, basically we can create whatever amount of curve whatever amount of tubes we can make we want of course we can make it into a digital asset and put it inside our game engines and also of course we can change all of these details whenever we want and thank you for watching see you next time